All right, why don't we go ahead and we'll go ahead and get started. So good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are um, today. Uh, welcome to um, our Modern and Accounting webinar with the Capital of Black Line. We're excited to be with you today. Um, we're just gonna kick off with just a few introductions um, and then we'll jump right into the webinar itself, um, the content, but um, just we'll start with just a brief introduction of um, eCapital and myself. So I'm Michelle Collier. Um, I'm a client partner here at eCapital. Um, I've been with eCapital e for about nine years, but my background actually is in accounting and finance and systems. So I've been working, I hate to say how many years, in finance, accounting, and systems. Um, let's just say more than 20. And um, but we're really excited to, to share with you today. Um, and I'll bet maybe I'll just give a quick overview, um, Molly, if you want to flip to the ECAP slide, and then I'll let Molly introduce herself um, and kind of get right into the, the, the meat of the, con the content today. So um, really eCapital wanted to just kind of share, we uh, we really work and live in the Office of Finance and Accounting. So all, most of all of our customers, um, we service to provide um, assistance and helping build you know better insights, better efficiencies, um, all through, you know, with reporting tools, planning tools, consolidation, and then um, why we're here today talking about accounting flows and, and tools and processes to make that more efficient um, to help folks do more value out of jobs. So um, that's really where we target our, what we've been around for 20 some years and really excited about our partnership with Blacklight and um, really excited for content that Molly's going to share with you today. So I'll just go ahead and let Molly jump, jump right in. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Um, nice to meet you all. My name is Molly Costello. So I'm a solutions consultant here at Blackline. So when you engage in a sales cycle with us, me or somebody like me would be walking you through that discussion. Now, a little bit about me. I did come from accounting as well. I spent five years in public uh, before I wised up and got out of public, but not a day too early, I guess. From there, I went into financial reporting, and that's when I was first exposed to Blackline. Something to know about me, I'm very passionate about efficiency and working smarter, not harder. And so that's what drew me over into my current role so that I can share that good news with folks like you. Um, so for today's agenda, we're going to first start talking about the challenges of your traditional accounting um, the manual processes that you guys are engaging in, or maybe that you're engaging in, maybe not, uh, and then how we can address those with our modern accounting playbook solution. And then we'll head over into a Q&A. So if you have any questions, um, you can save it for then. But let me turn off, save some bandwidth here. And we'll get started. So here's a little bit about my background in I have a coworker who does this. I thought maybe I'll, I'll try it out. He likes to start out with dad jokes and just, you know, it's a little um, cloudy overcast here in Colorado. So nice little smile to start the day before we start talking about accounting. That couldn't hurt anyone. So here it goes. My, my daughter thinks I'm nosy and won't respect her boundaries. Well, at least that's what she wrote in her diary. Uh, so maybe a little eye roll there, maybe a little laugh, but uh, let's get started. All right, so I want you all to think way back to 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Um, and, and what happened then? Well, everyone got intimately familiar with Zoom and WebEx and Microsoft Teams, and we all kind of normalized going to work in our pajamas, right? Well, that happened, but what else happened? Uh, a lot actually happened because in just eight weeks, we vaulted forward five years or so in terms of digital transformation. Right, and it seemed like the world stopped, but what really businesses had to keep moving. And there was a study that was conducted by McKinsey that found the companies that embraced those changes that pursued productivity improvements, digital transformation, they were more likely and actually created capacity for growth during the recovery. And so why are we talking about traditional accounting and digital transformation in that context, the answer is pretty simple. And it's because traditional manual accounting is not sustainable. So if you're thinking about growing your organization, if you're trying to attract and retain top talent, then you need to think about modernizing your accounting processes as well. And this is where Blackline comes in. Blackline was actually created because we observed a growing challenge in the marketplace the challenge that you're seeing on the screen, that traditional manual accounting processes are not sustainable. 
And what am I talking about when I mention traditional accounting? Uh, well, it's all of this. So it's the different people that are working in various often inconsistent processes. It's our fragmented technology in disconnected ERP landscape, um, disparate systems, which then require us to use a significant number of spreadsheets to connect the data uh, and perform that manual repetitive work. It's communicating our updates on progress through emails and meetings and back and forth phone calls, messenger, all of that. And then it's that and then trying to stay on top of our regulatory and reporting requirements. And it's all on a deadline, right? And so if you look at the world today, why is this not sustainable? Well, it generally breaks down into four buckets. Uh, one, it's a time thing, right? It takes too long. And the reason it's taking too long is because we're stuck in inefficient processes, right? So uh, the manual effort generally ends up being the biggest bottleneck to the closed process. That's according to the Hackett Group, a study they did. The second thing, it's risky, right? So if you're having to rush to get your things done because, well, time is of the es essence and there just isn't enough time, well, there's a risk of error there. And not just because we're humans and we're prone to making mistakes when we're rushed, but also because our processes breed errors. Those spread, spreadsheet intensive processes are prone to errors too. And another study that was done by MarketWatch found that 88% of spreadsheets have errors in them. But 88% of us would probably say that our spreadsheets are free from error. The third one, cost, it's expensive, right? Our people are expensive. And if you are working in this manual process and trying to manage and grow the business, you're gonna to have to add more people, which means additional costs. And in today's environment, that's maybe not even feasible, right? As accountants, we're always being asked to do more with less. And so adding more people, that might not be an option. You guys are already spread thin with the work that you're doing. And that kind of leads me into that fourth bucket morale. What happened in 2021? The great resignation. People finally said, that's it. I'm not doing this. I didn't go to college to do this. And they left, right? There was an impact on morale. And now you have, as an organization, an additional cost to recruit and train their replacement. So that is why it's not sustainable. And here are some of the impacts of those manual processes, the impacts that they have on our accounting team, and not just at the staff level, at the management level as well, right? When we think about inconsistent processes, there's um, a lack of ownership and control. That's a concern to management. When we have very detailed, heavy spreadsheets, again, there's a risk of inaccuracy. If I don't know how detailed this, this calculation is, I might miss a step. Manual effort, you know, the more we're engaged in manual work, the longer it takes and the more disengaged we become with our work, which leads to talent retention. So all of these things affect the accounting team and all of these are a result of manual traditional accounting processes. And one of the problems that really we see a lot, it, it, boils down to capacity, right? And it's, we just can't get enough done with the people we have. We don't have the capacity to take on more work. And so when we are at Black Lane, we like to talk about enhancing capacity versus reducing capacity. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we implement Black Lane, we may be saving 50% of the time we were previously doing on close. Uh, so we're closing 50% earlier, right? But, but that's not actual savings in, in the sense that you're going to be saving costs. The real savings, the real value is how you reallocate that time, right? So that extra two and a half, three, four, or five days that you're now getting each month, how are you going to reallocate that time to focus on your strategic initiatives. And so by enhancing capacity, what we're really trying to do is to align to the corporate strategy, to 
help you optimize your business processes, and then manage your risk and compliance. Those are things that are going to be, uh, that's how your capacity is going to be freed up. And those are some of the areas in which you can focus your new uh, time and attention to. And so you might be asking, why, why should we partner with Blackline? Well, one, we've done this for a long time. We actually fill a very unique space, which I'll talk about in just a minute, but we're also widely regarded as the market leader. And, and you, know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can go out and look at any of the third-party research that's out there, Gartner, G2, uh, go out there and see what they're saying about us. We have been in this space for 21 years. Uh, we pioneered the space and we are still leading this space. We've also done this a lot of times. You can see that we have experience with over 4,000 clients, uh, over 345,000 us users, and over 1,900 employees, many of which are former users like me. So you'll always have a great community of accountants out there to support you. We're also a strategic growth platform. So we'll meet you where you are, and then we'll help you manage those business complexities as you grow. So as you take on new projects, maybe um, add new business, we'll be able to help you do that in a scalable way. Now, we also lead by example. Our internal team at Blackline closes on Blackline in just three days, and that includes over 900 balance sheet reconciliations completed. That's a lot when you start to think about it, but because we're taking a modern accounting approach, we're automating where we can and enhancing our capacity internally as well. We are also publicly traded on the NASDAQ and we invest 50 million in R&D annually. So we're always investing in your continued success. And then finally, this is a big one. The auditors, your auditors love us. Blackline lets you collaborate with your auditors in the solution. And so it's going to be easy for them to get information without even bothering you. So go out and ask your auditor if they haven't heard of us. They probably know somebody who has. Um, go out and talk to them. Go out and look what's online. See what people are saying with us, saying about us, excuse me. And so you might be asking or saying, that's great, Molly, but you know, where does Blackline fit in all of this? What exactly are we doing? Uh, the truth is we fit right in the middle of that record to report process. So we support the activities that are not really directly managed by your ERP, but are still critical for the success of the business. So think about your balance sheet reconciliations, maybe journal entries, variance analysis, overall closed management. Um, all of those things generally happen in spreadsheets uh, because our ERP doesn't necessarily support all of those things. And so that's where we can come in and fill that void. And so what you're gonna see as we go through today, you're gonna see how we can help you centralize and standardize your processes, um, automate your month and close processes. And that in turn is going to allow you to accelerate that month and growth, or month and close process, scale for growth um, and enhance capacity across the organization. So what we're gonna talk about today is our modern accounting playbook. And this is what we ruled out, um, you know, after implementing over 4,000 customers, we realized that there was a best practice, um, a prescriptive approach. And so that's what we take to make sure you guys are realizing value sooner in the process. And so the way we roll it out, here's what we found works. Going with the month and close checklist, um, starting with account rec reconciliations, and then also your bank matching. And so that might work for 95% of our customers in this mid-market space, but maybe you're a little different, right? Maybe you have a little more automation that you want. And this is where it's critical um, to bring a partner like eCapital in, because since you are already familiar with them, they're gonna know your industry. They're gonna know um, your accounting. They're gonna know if you have any other projects on the horizon or on the landscape, and they're gonna know your tech stack. So what they bring to the table, excuse me, table is even more value for the same dollar um, as you'd pay for a black line implementation. So we can do it, um, but bringing in a partner like eCapital 
is going to get you more value for the same amount of money. All right, and this is gonna be our starting point. Our starting point are those manual processes that I've already mentioned, right? The manual processes, usually they're inefficient uh, because they lack automation. Uh, we don't get much visibility from our spreadsheets either. And oftentimes they're inconsistent. So the way one person is preparing it is different than somebody else's. That makes the review process a little more tedious as well. Uh, and I don't have to read all of these to you. I'm sure you guys have experienced this in your own experience, right, with, with spreadsheets in Excel. And so this is what we do. We take this and, and we modernize it. And so from there, we'll grow into these additional areas. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start out with automating that trial balance import into Blackline directly from your ERP. And this is going to be one-way data integration. It's going to ensure accuracy in your reconciliations. It's going to ensure consistency. It's also going to be controlled and secure. So you're going to be spending less time manually uploading this um, trial balance information and data and, and more time focusing on the reconciliations. We're also going to take a standardized approach. Uh, so this is gonna ensure consistency across those reconciliations. Similar templates will be used. This is also gonna simplify the close, reduce risk, save time. Then we'll also be able to set up tracking activities for your close. Um, we'll have role-centric reporting and dashboards so that you can see exactly where things stand and get control over the day-to-day -day and what's coming due. We'll also in enable automated GL and bank data extracts. So everyone has a bank reconciliation. So this is a good starting point, um, but we can use this rules-based approach and also get automation in additional places. But we'll start out with this, get you up and running, and then we're also going to enhance controls. So as soon as something is certified within Blackline, you are going to have locked down documentation. Um, you're gonna have a clear audit trail of everything that happened. And so, excuse me, everything is gonna be in a controlled environment. And that's the starting point, that gold area, that's the starting point. But oftentimes, once our customers get up and running on MAP, they want to expand their journey. They want to get additional automation across their month end close. And these top areas are where they often go to get it. So in addition to MAP, in addition to the checklist and the account reconciliations and the transaction matching for the bank, we also have the ability to create journal entries. So we can automate those repetitive journal entries, you know, base them on logic. You can do the review, the creation, the approval, all of that can be done in Blackline. And then we can push that either into the ERP, into the general ledger or into a sub ledger, right? What we're doing here is taking you out of the non-value added work. We can also automate your flux analysis. So this is going to allow you to monitor fluctuations in your account balances in real time and proactively address and monitor risk. Now, I already mentioned this, we'll start out with the bank rec, but if you need to expand into additional matching scenarios, we can support that. Maybe AR or AP, those are issues for you. Maybe it's payroll or intercompany or credit cards. We can handle all of that through our, our matching engine. We can handle all of that and more. So as you think about any of those processes that require intense manual ticking and tying, Blackland can solve for that with our matching engine. We'll also have a place for you to track your compliance activities. Uh, we can also optimize your order to cash cycle, significantly reducing any time it's taking for you to apply that cash to open invoices. And last, we have an intercompany solution. So if intercompany is a problem for you, and oftentimes it is, we can actually transform that entire process from transaction creation to balancing any out of balances to netting and settling amongst counterparties. All of that can be handled and automated through Blackline. And so the point of this is to show you where we start. We take a crawl, walk, run approach, um, but then to show you where we can go. 
you're not going to outgrow Blackline. Blackline is always going to be there for you to support that growth and scale with you, free up that capacity for your team. All right, so we're gonna hop into the solution. And one thing you're gonna notice is we are looking at some screenshots. So these were actually taken. Um, some of you may have been expecting to see a demo today, but we wanna leave a little bit to be desired so that you know once we get through with this, you wanna see a full demonstration. So today we're gonna supplement with those slides, tease it up for you um, so you can come back and you know request a full one. But right now we are logged in and this is gonna be a web-based solution. So we are currently in the prepare role and that's because this is gonna be the most common role in Blackline. Now, as soon as you log in, you're going to have a complete view of what you need to do. So usually these activities are going to be in an Excel spreadsheet. And when you go in, you have to filter down to your name, you have to filter due dates to see what's assigned to you and might, what might still be outstanding. But as soon as you log into Blackline, you're able to focus on just the items that you need to prepare. And again, we are in the preparer role, but you'll note that we can have a variety of different roles. So. You'll see that I'm also a prover. Um, I'm also an executive, a CFO. Uh, it seems like I wear a lot of hats here. That is not a problem, right? This is all good. One thing to note though, is that Blackline will always enforce segrega segregation of duties. Um, so what that means, I can go in and prepare something, but I can't turn around and put my approver cap on and then sign off in that role too. Uh, that would violate segregation of duties. And so that's an important control that's gonna be inherent in Blackline. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that or your auditors don't have to worry about that. And one thing we can also set up teams. And so what we'll do, we will assign out an individual who is responsible for preparing your items right? But Teams is going to give you visibility into any of those items across the team that might still be outstanding. And so you can use this to mitigate risk. So if somebody is sick, if somebody has a family emergency, um, if we didn't have this Teams function set up, we might otherwise miss those items uh, simply because we're not aware of what's outstanding. And, and this is something I find that you don't realize how important it is until you realize how important it is. And so let me give you an example. So I used Blackline previously and we were in month end close and a colleague of mine, he had a family emergency. So he had to miss several days. Uh, lucky for me, he had actually prepared all but 110 of his tasks and reconciliations. And, you know, I think there may have been 111 total. So Needless to say, I still had a lot of work to do. Um, but what I was able to do, I was able to go in and toggle to the teams and then prepare them. Nothing was missed, right? Except maybe my dinner plans for that night. Um, but I'm well fed. Don't worry about me. And, and, and think about that. So this is why I'm saying it's not something you think is important until you realize how important it is. What kind of risk would have existed if I didn't prepare all of those tasks, those journal entries, those reconciliations. That could have been a very big deal, but we effectively mitigated that risk by planning ahead and setting up teams. Now with the dashboard, it can change based on your role. So if I were to toggle over to the approver role, I would be able to see everything that's outstanding on the team that's been assigned to me to approve. Now, if I was in the executive or the CFO role, I'd basically have the keys to the kingdom. I'd be able to see everything, how it's all progressing across the entire organization. But what's the most important part of this? It's, it's going to be your workspace. So you'll be able to add new dashboard cards or rearrange them if you want. If you want to move this over here, this is your workspace, you can do that. You can also pivot the data on certain attributes. So you can see up here, we're tracking those closed activities by entity. And down here, we're tracking some items by reference field and aging them as well. And this is gonna be one thing that's inherent aging within Blacklight. And that's gonna be important because aging is often an indicator of risk. The longer something is outstanding, the riskier it is, right? It might impact our PL. 
And so in this case, what this is showing us, this is actually showing us adjustments that we have called out. So the balance is currently at 100,000 in our cash account. It should be 90,000. Well, that means we have an adjustment that needs to be posted. And so as soon as we create that item in our reconciliation, we'll have full visibility into those outstanding adjustments. Um, and we'll be able to make sure they get posted. So this is something I call no surprises because now that we have an effective and efficient way of tracking those adjustments, we can make sure they're posted so that there are no surprises when we give the board our financial statements or when we give the auditors our financial statements. And with all of these, they're going to be interactive. So if you want to drill down to the granular level of detail that's sitting behind these, you'll be able to do that directly from your dashboard. All right, so we're going to dive into the grid now. We're talking about tasks right now. So your month end close checklist, these are gonna be all of those tasks that have been assigned to you. And this is probably in an Excel list today, but Blackline can take that list, import it into the solution in bulk, assign out those tasks, who's responsible for what, when it's due, what the workflow is, and then it will show up in your task progress grid. So again, this is gonna be your workspace. You'll have the ability to control what you see. So if you wanna work on your month and close tasks on work days one, two, and three, you can set that as a default. And then when you log in, that will default to what you're looking at. You're filtering out all of that other noise. If you're focusing on internal controls at another point during the month, maybe mid-month, you can also set that up as a default view. And this is gonna allow you to filter down and, and focus on information that's important and relevant to you at the time it is relevant to you. Now, this is not just for month end close, this task management tool that we speak about. This can be used in a variety of different ways. So anything that you're manually tracking in a spreadsheet, maybe you don't even have it in a spreadsheet, you're just tracking it in your head, you know it, maybe it's in an Outlook calendar. We can bring that into Blackline, and what you're going to get by doing that is visibility. You're going to get a centralized workspace. You're going to have reminders on when things are coming due, and then we'll roll it forward for you when it's needed again. So if it's something that happens quarterly, you might forget about it when three months elapse. So Blackline will make sure that is front and center, rolled forward for you, ready when it's time in the period that it needs to be prepared. And so a couple of ways which you can use it, well, the best practice is going to be to bring them in by category. So we can start with that month end close checklist, but you can see we're also using it in a variety of different ways. Um, we have internal controls in here. Uh, we also are using it for our PBC list, and this is gonna be important. I'll talk about that in just a second. One that we're not seeing on here that is another great use case is reporting whether it's financial reporting or statutory reporting or tax reporting or regulatory reporting, all of those things can be brought into here. And again, get that centralized workspace, that streamlined workflow and that automated role for it of your tasks. Now, regarding these PBC lists, this is gonna be a popular use case because of two reasons. Well, one is that we can give your auditors access to Blackline. So as soon as something is fully certified, whether it's a task, whether it's a reconciliation or anything else, those auditors can then come in and start their testing. So they're not going to have to bother you um, to pull that information for you or for them. They can come in and have it be kind of like a self-service center. Two, the second reason is because we can actually link the work we're already doing in Blackline directly to their request. So if they wanted a reconciliation, we could link that reconciliation they're looking for to the request in the PVC list item. And then we're moving that duplicative effort of getting ready for the audit. Now, the way we do that is through task dependencies. So if we click on an icon like this, this is what we're going to be directed to. In task dependencies, this is how we ensure the proper order of operations in a workflow. So 
these dependencies can be linked to other tasks. They can be linked to account reconciliations, to journal entries. Uh, and let me give you an example. So if I needed Sarah, who's on my team, to post the management allocation fee before I worked on the tax provision, we could set that dependency up in Blackline. And then as soon as Sarah posted that entry, I could be notified. Right, so we're ensuring the proper order of operations, ensuring the correct workflow. By doing that, by enabling those alerts as well, we're also removing any bottlenecks to when this happens manually, right? All of that can be automated, including the notifications. Now with tasks, the way it's gonna work is in a hierarchical fashion, uh, in dependencies, excuse me. So we'll have the parent, task on top, the children tasks will be situated below. And the parent task cannot be certified until the child or children tasks have been completed. And that makes sense, right? I couldn't post the tax provision until Sarah first posted her entry. The same holds true in Blackline. So going back to the audit request, how is this going to help? Well, let's say this task right here, this is an audit request that relates to an account reconciliation. And here we've linked that actual account reconciliation to this request. What's going to happen? Okay, as soon as I fully certify this reconciliation, it can automatically mark off that audit request as well. And that seems simple, right? But, but those little things tend to add up. Think about the time you might be spending pulling supporting documentation for your auditors. Maybe 15 minutes per request, maybe 10 minutes per request and then multiply it by the number of requests they have. So that is time that adds up. This is time we can save you um, by bringing in these sorts of processes to Blackline. And so this is why your customers love Blackline. Um, they're eliminating that duplicative effort of getting ready for the audit. That's why the auditors also love Blackline. They can come in here and see the work when it's prepared. They don't have to bother us for that. All right, so once we bring in your checklist, it's going to create a workspace like this for you. And so a common theme you'll note throughout Blackline is the ability to add purpose and instructions right within the task or right um, in a reconciliation as well. And again, this is gonna be critical information, right? Think back to 21, 2021, the great resignation, everybody left their jobs. In fact, I left my job in 2021. Um, and when that happens, you know, we run the risk that we lose institutional knowledge. And in fact, in my previous role, I was the global consolidations lead. So we had a very detailed consolidation report that you had to comb through page by page to ensure everything was just right. When I left, nobody else on the team really knew exactly what needed to be done. I tried to train them on it. I tried to leave good notes, but most of the time they would just copy my notes, use the same highlights um, without really understanding the purpose or the why, right? How to spot if something was wrong. Now that's a big risk. And, and what ended up happening was our VP of finance and accounting who had previously been in my role, he ended up doing that process for several months after I left because he needed to know it was done correctly and he couldn't trust that the team was doing it correctly. Now, if we had memorialized all of that information um, somewhere where it was easily accessible for others to use, that would have been helpful, right? So this is how that can mitigate the risk of when you have people leaving. It's gonna also be useful for onboarding or cross-training. So moral of the story, protect that information. And even if these things are not well-documented, you can still add to this, build on it as you go. So it, it's gonna be something that's easy for those preparers to update. The reason is the preparers are probably the most familiar with how something needs to be done. So they have the ability to update that as your processes change. All right, within Blackline, you'll also have a space to add commentary and supporting documentation. And what we're talking about here is source documentation. So this could be a Word doc, an Excel file, it could be a PDF or maybe even just a snippet. Um, but Blackline is really gonna act as your central repository for your documentation. And so we would encourage you to bring in 
that comments or those comments and that supporting documentation for a variety of reasons. The first one being, as soon as we sign off on this task, all of the supporting documentation and comments are going to be locked down. So nobody will have the ability to come in later and then change it, save over it, delete it, you know, all of those things that we have all probably experienced before. Blackline is going to lock this down in a controlled environment. So that's one reason. Another reason is, well, well, just the amount of time it takes for us to find documents, to do our job, find information, it's staggering how much time it takes each day. And if this was live, I would ask everyone to submit a guess, um, but it's not. So think about it. A study by McKinsey found that we spend an inordinate amount of time looking for documentation out of an eight hour day. Do you think that's one hour? Do you think that's two hours? Do you think, Molly, you're crazy? We don't work eight hour days. That's, I haven't seen that since you know, I was 16. That might be another answer. The actual answer is 1.8 hours out of each day is spent looking for information to do our jobs. And that's because it might be in folders that are disorganized. It might be on my desktop or in an email somewhere. So by bringing this in and centralizing it, one, we can roll forward that information automatically, but two, we'll also have the ability, and it's not up here, but usually just right above this, you'd have the ability to go back into a previous period and look at that documentation. So if this is the first time I'm preparing this, I'm maybe unsure of what needs to be attached, I can easily go back and see what was attached in any of the prior periods. So we can turn that 1.8 hours into 1.8 seconds. All right, and once we've added that support, our comments, you'll have the ability to go ahead and certify your task. Um, and like I said previously, once we certify, all of that information is going to be locked down. That element of control is going to be um, pervasive in the system. And again, think about it. I know we have all had this happen. We've saved something down and somebody deleted it. We saved over it. Somebody moved it. It's distressing, I guess, to say the least uh, when that happens. And, and then that leads to rework, right? But not anymore. We're going to protect all of that information within Blackline. And when you have a, a certification, when you certify, you'll have the ability to add a certification statement. This is basically just saying what we're attesting to. And so auditors love this as well, because it spells out for them exactly what you did. And some people actually, we see some of our customers, they sit down with their auditors and then craft these statements together so that everyone is on the same page. All right, so once we've done those tasks, those, those journal entries, all of the above, probably time to move into the reconciliations. And so when we're in the reconciliations, you're gonna have a similar grid that is searchable, sortable, filterable, all of that good stuff. You can save down new views, just like we saw with the task. This is gonna allow you to quickly prioritize your work. And we'll hop into one. So with Blackline now, this is where your reconciliations will live. Um, and they don't necessarily have to, right? You can still use Excel. Uh, you can just attach an Excel file that says, this 68,000 is what this general ledger balance relates to, and then go ahead and sign off. That's one option. But when you do that, you're missing out on the automation that we can bring to the reconciliation process. We take a templated approach with Blackline. So in this case, we're looking at the amortizable template. We're using amortizable items here, but we'll have nine different templates that are available for you. And these will um, cater to each of the specific accounts in question, right? In general, these are going to address over 95% of your balance sheet reconciliations. And each one of these automated rec templates has, as the name implies, a piece of automation built into it. So for example, we're looking at the amortizable template. What we're able to do with this template is import items that have a start date, an end date, and an amount. And then Blackline will give us the amortization schedule 
in a matter of seconds. And we can import multiple at a time very easily right here. So if we needed to do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, we just need to import start date, end date, orig original or origination amount. And Blackline would give us 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 amortization schedules just like that. And because these schedules live within Blackline, Blackline is also going to automatically update the balances for us in each period. So you can see we added this item in the current period. Blackline is already taking into consideration that we should have recorded some amortization expense in updating the balance accordingly. So really this can be like a set it and forget it approach until you have additional prepaids that you need to add to the reconciliation. Now, how we really bring automation to the table is we connect those templates with our auto certification rules. And so we have 11 of these rules. These rules are going to be based on logic, right? Um, is this balance properly substantiated based on this logic, based on X, Y, Z? If it is, Blackline will sign off on the reconciliation for you. So that means no work would be required by the preparer, the approver, reviewer. Blackline is taking care of that for you. And so the way it works with a prepaid, right? We import this information. Blackline is going to automate those amortization schedules for us and then also update the balances every period for the following periods. So as long as we're posting that amortization expense, right? The, the entry required to get these down to zero, then our support, these balances, which are updated by Blackline, should in theory agree to the general ledger balance, which is feeding in directly from your ERP. If that's the case, and you guys can set a threshold as well. So if you want it to be within a dollar, two dollars, zero, that would be up to you. But if that's the case, then this reconciliation will auto certify next month. So one fewer reconciliation you need to do. All of the supporting items, all of the supporting invoices we've attached, any comments, those will also roll forward automatically as well. That's how an auto certification rule works in this instance. And when you take all of that into consideration, all of the rules, all of the templates, our global average for auto certifying reconciliations for our customers is right around 60%. So I want you to think about just for a second, how would you reallocate your time if your team was spending 60% less time preparing reconciliations? That's how we're enhancing capacity, allowing you to align to the corporate strategy, optimize business practices and processes, and then also manage risk and compliance. And just like within tasks, we're going to have the same ability to add comments, to add documents, to support this uh, reconciliation. Anything that's relevant, we can attach it here. Obviously, with the invoices, we can attach those directly to the amortizable items. But any other supporting documentation that kind of relates to the account rec overall, that can be attached down here and then rolled forward as well. All right, so one thing that's going to be embedded in this type of reconciliation template is the roll forward. And this is giving us useful information. One, we're looking at the balances so we can see where we are in the current period, how they're supposed to amortize off over time. This might be useful for budgetary purposes or forecasting. If we get into the December period and we haven't received an invoice from Oakland County, we may need to accrue an expense, right? So it can be useful in that way. It can also be useful here. If we toggle to activity, rather than looking at the balances, what you'll see is the amortization expense that needs to be posted. This is something I haven't mentioned yet, but this is gonna be critically important too. You'll have the ability to bring in reference fields. Uh, you'll have the ability to bring in up to five additional reference fields, and this is going to help you capture information that may be relevant to reporting, um, may be relevant to posting journal entries. And so in this case, that's what we're doing, making our journal entry process even easier. By bringing in the offset account number, we can toggle to activity and then see the expense that needs to be posted for each of these periods. 
And by bringing in that offset account number, we know exactly where that expense needs to be posted. So what we can do with this, export it to Excel, format it for our journal entry template, and then upload that to the ERP. And we're done. And as long as we are posting these journal entries, making sure the amortization expense is recorded, then our support from those amortizable schedules should agree to the general ledger balance. If that's the case, Blackline is going to auto certify the reconciliation for you. So these are quick, easy wins. This is taking your team out of the non-value added activities. Um, so think about the, the ways you can bring in additional information that might be useful to reporting um, or to posting journal entries or any other information that you might need. You can bring it in through your reconciliations. And one thing to note, because I've already mentioned it, you will have the ability to, um, to take these journal entries and automate them. So what we're doing here, obviously exporting to Excel, that makes the process easier. But as a phase two, this can be a place where we automate those journal entries for you. So even less work for you to do. That's one way in which we can automate journal entries. All right. Attached to every reconciliation is also going to be a trend analysis. And we're probably all big fans of trends um, as we are all accountants. So this could be useful information too, right? Maybe you're seeing that we had a big jump in March. Well, maybe you also wanna document the reason for that in the reconciliation. You can add a comment that says, you reviewed the trend analysis and the change appears reasonable because we added a new property in March. You'll have the ability to do all of that. This is just giving you useful, referenceable information. And, and that's kind of an overview of reconciliations in general. Um, I guess the key takeaways, we're going to have an automated import of your trial balance into Blackline, and this can be on a daily basis, right? This is going to allow you to spread out that burden of the month and close over a period of time instead of over three days when everything is a fire drill. We also have nine automated reconciliation templates that pair with our 11 auto certification rules. And globally, our customers are realizing 60% of their reconciliations being auto certified by Blackline. That's a big time save. Now within the reconciliations, we'll automatically roll forward your supporting documents, your comments, your balances. You'll have visibility into what actually exists in the reconciliation and aging is gonna be key. To. And we just looked at a prepaid, but you're going to have the same functionality available in your other reconciliations as well. So accruals, subledgers, fixed assets, whatever you have, we have a template and an auto certification rule that can be used with it. So that's reconciliations in general. Now we're going to talk about transaction matching. And like I said, we'll start with the bank reconciliation. So it's going to have a similar look and feel to the other reconciliation we just looked at, but a few new things to note. Now, this bank balance, this is being automatically imported. This is coming from your bank to our secure FTP, and then Blackline is updating this, again, on a daily basis. Now, we're going to be comparing that and any supporting items against our general ledger balance. And Blackline's going to give us a place to add bank items, other supporting items. This is all going to be available to us. One thing you might have noticed is this, this match set. So this is where we're taking two data sources. When you think about your bank rec, we have the bank data and the general ledger data. So we're going to be taking those two data sources, importing them into Blackline automatically, and then comparing them against each other using logic using rules. And we'll define those rules during implementation. And there are a couple of different rules we can define. So automatic rules, that means everything is an exact match, date, amount, check number, et cetera. Um, if that's the case, we would call it an automatic rule. We can also implement suggested rules. So this might be, you know, the date amount matches, the check number matches, but the amount is off by $1. We probably want somebody to review that before Blackline automatically matches it off. So that's what a suggested rule would be used for. And then this can run daily. So you can come in here and rather than focus on focusing on any proactive matching, you'll be able to focus on the exceptions, right? So that's going to be your starting point in here. 
And so this is going to look like your traditional bank reconciliation. So we have the bank over here on the left. We have the general ledger over here on the right. And while that's the two data sources we're comparing in this instance, these could really be any two data sources. So when you're looking to expand past map, maybe you want to do matching with AR, AP, payroll, credit card processor to point of sale, intercompany. We could implement all of those different matching use cases. And the benefit here is that Blackline is doing the majority of the work so that you're just focusing on the exceptions. Now, when you're in here, you'll have the ability to automatic or to manually match things off if they didn't match. And if that's the case, right, we can see the difference is zero. Well, then maybe we need another rule. We can add additional logic to uh, accommodate that. For those other items like timing differences, we have some ACH. We'll be able, able to easily add that to the face of the reconciliation right from here. We just need to action up an item, take a few clicks, and then Blackline will put those timing differences on the face of the reconciliation. But I want to take a step back real quick and dive into the match set, right? How did we get here? This is where we're going to be defining our two data sources, in this case, the GL detail and the bank detail. And those come together to create a match set, like I said. And so within this match set, we're going to embed these pass rules. So this is how we're telling Blackline to do the matching. And we'll start out with the most stringent, the ones to ones. Um, and there, from there, we can slowly get more exotic. And we're going to be using the same logic you're currently using, but just know that any of the any of the, the data fields in your data sources can be used for matching. So if you wanted to dates, description, reference field one, location, card number, all of that can be used for logic. And we also have the ability to enhance those data sources upon import. So if you needed to parse out just a few numbers from a string of text, you could do that. That's going to prime your data, your transactions for matching. OK, so we'll teach you how to use this. Um, and you can add as many rules as needed. It's going to go from 1 to 11, looking for matches. Once something is matched off, it will take it out of the pool. But the beauty here is that this is going to be an iterative process. You can have as many rules as needed. That can be one rule. If it accomplishes the matching, it can be up to 100 if that's what's needed. And hopping into one of the rules, this is just going to show you what's working behind the scenes. So here's the mapping. This is the logic that we're using. In this case, we're looking from the bank file, the amount, if it agrees to the account amount in the general ledger. OK, good. What about the date? If the date as of agrees to our date over here, then that will create a match. And you'll see that we also have the ability to put offsets in ranges in here. So this is where the matching isn't perfect. Maybe it's plus or minus a dollar we want to look at, or plus or minus one, two, three, five, ten days. All of that can be included in the logic. So we're expanding out um, into reality, right? Not everything clears on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, this grouping is also going to be useful. This is how we accomplish many-to-many -many or one-to-many matching. So what this is going to do it's going to use one or more fields for grouping. In this case, we're looking at date and document JE description. So you'd have one transaction in the bank, and then we'd be grouping everything that had the same date and description over here. And this could be 10 transactions. This could be 100. Um, but this is the logic that would be used to accomplish those more exotic matches. And then lastly, another powerful thing is filtering. We can use filtering to basically filter out any transactions that we don't want to be considered for matching. So if we're looking at the bank, we might want to say anything with this type code 475, bring it in. Uh, anything else, ignore. On the GL side, we're saying anything where the description has SOFI, also bring that in. And nothing else is going to be considered by the rule. And so this is how we can get really granular. This is how we can get um, a high match rate for our customers because it is so powerful and robust. And I'm not really going to dive into any more of those details because I don't want to make it seem too complex because it's not. But this is really where the magic is happening. And our customers love transaction matching because on average, we are matching in the 90% plus range. 
So another way to think about it, Blackline handles 90% of the matching. Your folks are left with 10% or less that didn't match off enhanced capacity. All right, we're almost there. Um, Blackline has enhanced reporting that's going to be available to you as soon as you log in. And basically every data point in Blackline that you bring in, whether it's tasks, whether it's reconciliations, anything else, that's going to be reportable. Uh, so a lot of different ways we can use this data here. Maybe you wanna see the, the GL balances across our accounts, the unidentified difference, the percentage, the roll up into which entity, um, who owns it, what the risk level is, all of this is going to be available. And even more than that, right? And you'll also have the ability to go ahead and add in charts or visualizations so that you can then drill into any granular level details similar to our dashboard cards. But this is highly configurable. You'll have 71 reports available to you as soon as you sign in. From there, you can go in and make your edits, make your tweaks, and then run them ad hoc or scheduled. If you wanna see something daily, weekly, monthly, whatever fits your needs, you'll be able to do that. And you'll also have the ability to export them to Excel or PDF. So this is one of the more undervalued, underrated tools, but it's so easy to set up. It's so easy to configure. If you wanna add a field, you can just go over here. It's hidden, but you'd have the ability to do that and, and really make reporting meaningful to you. So very easy to use, um, very fun. It, if you're like me, I like to play around in reporting, very fun to use as well, but that pulls together um, all of the aspects of Blackline that we're using in one place. All right, just wanna summarize everything for everyone. Thank you for being here with us. Um, to summarize, Blackline is going to have you covered. So. You're going to be able to centrally organize all of your information in one place, a single source of truth. You're going to have organization. You're not going to have all of those folders everywhere. This is going to allow you to easily and quickly identify information, roll it forward if you need it to. Visibility is going to be in real time. You'll see that on your dashboards. You'll also get those updates through email if you need it on when something is prepared or maybe is past due. All of this leads to a more efficient process. And when we're taking Excel or limiting the use of Excel, we're also mitigating risk, reducing our risk of errors. So that's it for me. Um, I guess I will send it to Michelle, ask if there are any questions that we can answer before we wrap this up. Yeah, thanks, Molly. Um, yeah, any questions that we have? I don't see anything in the Q&A or chat, so I'll give everybody just a second, and if we don't have any, we can go ahead and wrap up. So, like, looks like we don't. Um, so I think we can go ahead and wrap. Molly, thanks so much, and hope everybody has a great day. Oh, and, and Michelle, do you want me to put your information up on the screen? Sorry. Oh, that'd be great. So everybody can capture. Sure, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Yes. So make the move to Modern Accounting. Partner with eCapital. They are great partners of ours. And if you need to contact anyone from there, that, that information is listed on the screen. Perfect. Thanks so much, Molly. Yep. Definitely reach You're out welcome. if you have any questions. Bye, everyone. Thank you.